In this video, we're going to expand on the previous tutorial where we showed you how to create the end of a scroll. We're going to make a larger work area. We're going to duplicate the scroll that we created and so we have a top and a bottom. And then we're going to show you how you can make an aged looking piece of paper to flow between these two and discuss some of the options for how you might want to produce this finished part. To begin, we'll open a copy of Aspire. So let's start this example by clicking on open an existing file and from the scroll project folder we're going to select the file scroll end distorted. And this was the file that we created in the tutorial preceding this one. If we hit open we'll see that go up to view tile windows horizontal and we can see the 2D and the 3D view. Now the first thing we need to do is make our job size much bigger to accommodate the entire model of the scroll that we plan to build now. Come over to set job dimensions and origin. We're going to leave the width at 18. We're going to change the height to 24. We'll hit OK. We'll see that's created a bigger workspace for us with our scroll model in the middle. Next, I'm going to draw a rectangle which is going to represent effectively the paper that goes between the two ends of the scroll. I'm going to put in a value for this of width 11 and we're going to make the height 18 and hit create and close. Now what I want to do is take the three components that I've got here and align them with the middle part of the top of this paper. So the first thing I'm going to do is select all of those and I'm going to right mouse click and go to group objects we'll see if we look on the modeling tab that that's created a single group with the three components paper and our two handles in it and I'll just right mouse click on that and we'll rename it and we'll call that scroll top next to align that with the top part of the paper I'm just going to come back to the drawing tab I'm going to use the polyline tool and I'm just going to snap to the end and come out horizontally and make a short line. I'm going to select our group, hold shift down and select that line and use the icon here to center vertically. So it's going to move that group of components up and center it vertically on that little uh, vector that we drew there which I'm now going to select and delete. And just hit F on the keyboard to fit that back into the window. Now I'm going to create the bottom of my two scrolls so I'm going to select the group of components from the top here. I'm going to go to Control, Shift and V in order to create a vertical copy around the middle of the part. I'm going to click on the modeling tab. I'm going to right mouse click on our new component. Go to rename and we'll call this one scroll bottom. Now with that selected I'm going to come on to the mirror selected objects. I'm going to flip that horizontal and I'm going to flip that vertical in order to change the position it's in and get the look that I'm aiming for here between the top and the bottom of my scroll. Now at this point as we've adjusted the size of the job and we now have a part which is more vertical than horizontal it probably makes more sense to go to view tile the windows vertically and then we get a, a better um, orientation for looking at this particular part. Now as far as our paper goes that's going between the two scrolls, there's a number of ways we could deal with this. As I mentioned in the first part of the tutorial, we could just machine those two scrolls separately and attach them to perhaps a piece of plywood or some sort of uh, backing material that we could display a piece of paper, a diploma or a certificate on. Or we may actually want to machine this and perhaps engrave the writing into it. In that case we might want to just take a simple shape like the rectangle and just build up a flat plane. So I could select that, click on create shape from vectors, I'm going to select a flat shape profile, put in a value of 0.125, if we hit apply we can see that there, I'm just going to set that to merge and we could call that simple paper and close. And there we would have a finished model if we wanted to machine that that just has nice simple straight sides for our um, particular model. 
In this case though, I think I would like to give this a more aged look. Um, so it's like a more ancient scroll. So we're going to add some unevenness into the sides here and perhaps add some um, elements that look like small tears in it as well. So what I'll do is just take that component and we'll go ahead and hit delete to delete that from the keyboard. We'll come back and uh, look view down Z, go up to view, tile the windows vertical so we can see the 2D and the 3D. And in fact, because we're going to do some vector editing now in the 2D view, I think I'm going to go ahead and just maximize the 2D view. Now to create the aged look, I'm going to take this vector, I'm going to hit N on the keyboard to go into node editing, and I'm going to start to add in nodes and manipulate those nodes. And I'm going to do this using the shortcut keys on the keyboard. So things like I to insert a node. If I hover over the place where I'd like to put a node, I hit I. It'll insert a node. If I wanted to then smooth that, I can hit S on the keyboard. I can then click that. And we can drag that in a little bit if we want. If we zoom in now, around the middle, I'm going to hit I to insert another node. Then I'm just going to grab that, just the node itself, and pull that in. Hit I on here to insert another node and drag this up. Click on this to drag it out. Insert another node here. Just drag that out as well. Hit S on the keyboard to unsmooth that node. That was a smooth node at that point in time. We can hit F on the keyboard to come back out. We can see how that looks. If we're happy with that, I might want to zoom in again. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to hit I on the keyboard. I on the keyboard. I'm going to hit I on the keyboard again. And just insert several different nodes there. And... Then I'm going to hit S to unsmooth this, grab this node here, just pull this in. We can see we've re-smoothed that node as the way I'd grabbed it there. So we'll just hit S on the keyboard to unsmooth that and just drag this out again. I'm going to hit I on the keyboard to put in another. Node there, hit S on the keyboard once more, just grab this piece here. Hit F to fit. Drag this down. Actually, we'll drag that in the other way. I'm happy with the way that looks. And we can come over to the other side. Hit N to go back to node editing. Hit I and S on the keyboard in this case. We'll drag that in. I at the top here, I in the middle, just drag that out. Add another node in there to drag that up. And then perhaps somewhere around here, once again, I'm just going to hit I to insert some more nodes. Go over the span in between and hit L to turn those both into lines. We'll drag that piece in there, go back to a Bezier span. B on the keyboard to go to a Bezier span. And there we can see we've just created some older looking sort of more uneven edges. We could continue to manipulate these if we wanted to add additional nodes in here and change these around. It doesn't want to be too smooth. So you might want to come in and hit S on the keyboard to unsmooth these nodes and just drag these around a little bit. Till you like the way that looks. Now let's go back to view, tile the windows vertical. We can select the vector that we've um, edited with the node editing tools. Come over to create shape again. Flat shape 0.125. Change it to merge. Hit apply. And we could call that old paper. Hit close, come up to view, uncheck draw modeling plane, we'll maximize the 3D view and we can see how that part looks. At this point we probably want to save the file, come up to file, save as and we'll call this scroll display 
finished and hit save. Now we could take this and we could create toolpaths on it, do a simple rough and finish over the whole part or as we mentioned before you might want to take this middle piece and machine that out of a flat piece of material and then attach the two um, scroll components to the end of that. That may involve you wanting to build that material up or create an outline that you could mount these onto. That would be quite simple to do if you wanted to do that. If we click on um, the 2D view there. Now there's a number of ways that we could work with this part now. If we go up to view, tile windows vertical. We could take this and we could just model it as we did before. Go create shape from vectors, flat shape 0.125. Go to merge and call this old paper. Hit apply, close, and then we could take that if we so desired now and just save the file, file, save as, and we'll call that scroll display finished and save that in the project folder. And you could create roughing and finishing toolpaths on that and cut the whole thing out. However, that could be quite inefficient depending on the size that you're actually going to make the part. And it's probably more efficient to actually cut a the flat piece um, as out of a flat piece of material and include the outlines of the top and the bottom scroll so that you could then machine those separately and glue those on top of those flat areas in order to finish off the complete display. So the way that you would do something like that, we could just take that component that we just created there, hit delete, and all we really want is an outline that's going to go around the two scrolls and will essentially merge in with this piece of um, paper that we created here. So to do that I would select the top and the bottom scroll. I would go and click on create vector boundary from selected components. If we deselect we can click and see the vector that we've created there. What I would now do is take those two and this vector right mouse click and go to copy to layer I'm going to copy those to a new layer which I'm going to make visible and active and we'll call this scroll outline actually call it complete scroll outline hit OK the drawing tab I'm going to pop up the layer manager switch off component grayscales hit hide and with those vectors selected on the drawing tab we can come over now and click on weld selected vectors and that's going to create an outline which is the combination of our old piece of paper plus the outline shapes of the top and the bottom. This could now be profile cut in order to cut that out and then these could be cut as individual 3D parts in order to mount on top of that and make the finished display. So let's go ahead and say file, save as and we'll call this scroll display outline so that you can see a copy of that part if you want to take a look at it in the project folder. Now that really concludes this particular tutorial. In a subsequent tutorial we're actually going to take an earlier version of this where we had the model of the outline of the old paper and we're going to show you a different technique of how we might take something like that and use it to create a sort of folded parchment that ultimately we're going to turn into a treasure map.